I recently did a test on the G2 RIP, Radically Invasive Projectile Ammo, and it caused some controversy. Uh, I got the exact same results that other testers are getting. If you look at the gel blocks, if you look at the blocks that I got and the results and how the trocars broke apart and, and the penetration, it's exactly the same as what the company gets, as what Rated RR did in his testing. So we're getting the same result, but I came to some conclusions that are kind of opposite of what the company asserts and, and what some of the commenters on my videos have been asserting. So I wanna explore that. I wanna go in and show you why I came to the conclusions I did. The G2 RIP has two main wounding mechanisms. I mean, the bullet, as you look at it here, it's got the, the pointy pedals, which break off and they call these trocars. And then it also has this deep penetrating base. And the base, uh, in my testing, I got about 12.7 inches of penetration through uh, organic ballistic gel and about 14 inches of penetration through the clear ballistics gel, which is pretty much exactly what everyone else is getting. There's not really an argument about the base. The base is a decent little bullet. It does penetrate deep enough that if you put the shot on target, it could potentially cause an incapacitating hit. Thing is, it's not a very big bullet. In terms of size, it's not even quite as big as a 380 ACP. It's not that the base is bad, it's just that it's not all that great because it, the base's penetration can be exactly matched with a 380 ACP, or actually even a little bit exceeded because the 380 is heavier and does expand to a slightly bigger diameter. So that's all we really need to know about the base. It's decent. It, it does do its job. So the confusion is all about the trocars then. So I thought, you know, let's try that. Let's take this trocar and let's penetrate some flesh. Not so much. So now let's look at how effective the trocars would be in actually wounding someone. And some of this information I've been taking for granted may not be so clear to people who aren't as used to dealing with this stuff as I am. So I'm gonna show you. Four inches of penetration. Uh, I got a lot of comments on the blog, people telling me that you know I'm wrong and that four inches is perfect. Four inches is ideal because they just, you know, they turn sideways, they measure their chest, and you know, they're right. Four inches deep in a body would put something right about in the, the vital organs, but these wouldn't go four inches in a body. We're going four inches in ballistic gel, not in a body. And four inches of gel penetration is not the same as four inches of body penetration. I'm gonna show you why. First of all, we gotta understand that ballistic gel is a simulant of muscle tissue. It has been scientifically correlated. It was scientifically formulated to exactly match the density and the resistance properties of pig muscle tissue. And the guy who developed it, Martin Fackler, he shot repeatedly into swine thighs and then into ballistic gel, and he formulated it so that he would get exactly the same penetration depth. But bodies have a lot more than just muscle. Sure, everything is wrapped in muscle, but we also have bones, we also have skin. Skin is very tough, skin is difficult to penetrate, and skin alone can account for two to four inches of penetration. So I'm gonna show you some various projectiles that will penetrate through three and a half to four inches, the same depth as the troll cars go. I'm gonna show you other projectiles that go that far so you can put it in context. First up, a BB from a BB gun. This is how we calibrate ballistic gel. Now, do you think that a BB is likely to penetrate somebody's vital organs and shred them? Not really. Second thing, a CCI shot shell. This shell is designed for, it says right on it, pest control. That means snakes and rats. We get three and a half to a little over four inches of penetration. Do you think that this would be an ultra devastating man stopping round that will blast through and shred the vital organs of any person you shot it at? I if so, I don't think you'll find a lot of medical examiners or physicians or hunters who will agree with you. It, it isn't. Now we're gonna compare birdshot out of a handgun. A little Taurus Judge, public defender, two inch barrel. Yeah, we get about six inches, you know, five to six inches. And yet you ask anyone, you ask any hunter, you ask any doctor, any medical examiner, any forensic pathologist, if they think that bird shot from a handgun is gonna be some super ultimate vital organ destroying man stopper, I don't think so. And finally, this should really drive the point home. 
poke my finger through four inches of ballistic gel. It's no big deal to go through four inches of ballistic gel, but I cannot poke my finger four inches deep into my body. Maybe Bruce Lee could, but I sure can't. So how does G2 demonstrate the effectiveness of this round? If I'm saying that birdshot will penetrate as deep or deeper than the, as the trocars will, how do they demonstrate how devastating it is? They shot a bird. I kid you not, you cannot make this stuff up. They posted a video on their web channel showing them shooting a chicken, a four pound, maybe five pound bird. Now, a chicken is in no way a comparable to a 200 pound human attacker, but this is what they showed, so I guess I have no choice. I will have to go shoot chickens. Yeah, it does a devastating job. It blows a hole through that chicken. Pretty much exactly the same hole blown through the chicken. Now, let's put into perspective, let's use the bird shot. It didn't make an exit wound of any significance. Only a few little pellets exited. But if you look at the devastation it wreaked upon the chicken, it's horrific. It's tremendous. But even so, I still would not advise that you use a judge with birdshot as a personal defense weapon. And I don't think this has demonstrated that the G2 rip is anything special just because it shot a chicken. So let's try something a little more realistic. Let's try to make a human analog. Now, we can't actually shoot a human. There's no facility we can go to to go test ammo on convicted pedophiles. It just doesn't exist. So we're going to use our ballistic gel, but we're going to make it more of a simulant for an actual human being. I'm going to embed some ribs in the front of it. On top of that, we're going to put a layer of pig skin because skin is a lot more resistant to penetration than gel is. And then we're going to put the four layers of denim on top of that. And let's see how a G2 rip compares to a gold dot when firing through this basically simulated human body. The trocars, you can see there was one of them was laying on top of the gel. There's one up here, one here, and one here. So I can account for four actually I can see a fifth one is stuck on a rib underneath there. So I can count for five. I don't know where the other three are. I'm assuming they're somewhere within this side. So the trocars really didn't do anything past the ribs at all. And then this is the main bullet, which had penetration of just a little bit over 12 and a quarter inches. The way this works out to me is that this is your only real damager. The other things stopped before the ribs or, or right immediately after. They didn't really go in and penetrate and rip up the vital organs. They didn't make it past the wall of bones. We've got our entry wound, obviously, and we have the big expansion. Okay, so right immediately on the back side of the ribs we got one and yes there's one here on the front side of the ribs so get in there and get that one and see where the main bullet went through it destroyed that one bone. Um, but I'm not seeing any damage to any of the other bones. I am not seeing that the trocars in any way affected the bones. So I don't think any of these trocars went through a bone. I think that 
the ones that got through went between or perhaps under the bone. This went through four layers of denim and then the pig skin slammed went about two and a quarter two and a half inches to where it hit the ribs and then it made this big stretch cavity and then the bullet itself continued on and lodged right about 17 inches okay so there it is that's the type of damage you can likely expect from a g2 rib trocars broke off rammed into the rib cage and basically did nothing after that. I mean, just one of them went under it, one of them barely poked three. Nothing significant from the trocar. So where you got real damage was from the base, which did penetrate nice and deeply. But again, you could get this type of diameter and penetration from a little 380. So why carry a, a smaller weight nine in that point? Why not carry a gold dot and get substantially bigger and heavier performance in that damaging or even 147 grain HST look how much bigger that is how much more damage that would do deep where it counts that's the point but there's even something further that I want to discuss okay this type of scenario that I just showed would be applicable if you were shooting somebody who happened to just present you know a target like hey here I am shoot me you know, here's my vital organs. They're right here. If they're standing like this saying, hey, you know, shoot me. You, you couldn't shoot them because they're not threatening you. But what if they were threatening you? This is why the FBI requires a minimum of 12 inches of penetration. So it has the, the ability to get through an intervening forearm and still hit the vitals. Because shooting through an arm, when, when we mention, you know, you may have to shoot through an arm, we're not talking about Oh no, don't shoot me. That's, that's not the scenario. We're talking about somebody's pointing a gun at you. Their arms are in the way of their vital organs. They're blocking the target. So you need a bullet that can get through there. What's going to happen with the G2 rip? I'll tell you what's going to happen. It'll hit the arm. The trocars will fragment off. And the only thing that may get through is going to be this little base. This is all the real wounding that a G2 rip has. Now, look. It's up to you what you want to use. You can use G2 rips. If you believe in it, go right ahead. I have no problem with that. I'm just trying to clarify why I said I don't believe in it and it's not around that I would want to use. If, if all the real damage potential is going to be coming from this little base, I'd much rather have a big old 147 grain HST doing that damage or 124 grain, grain gold dot plus P. I don't think the trocars are doing anything significant. I think that, you know, I'll give you a scenario where they could. If you shot somebody in the throat, the trocars would probably be pretty devastating. They would be able to hit the arteries that are in the throat or, or cut the windpipe. Sure. But I want ammo that will perform well in every possible scenario. And to me, I see especially the forearm makes this not able to perform in some scenarios whereas a conventional hollow point will definitely perform it'll do the damage on a chicken if you want to shoot chickens it'll do the damage on the real body and it will perform consistently this is why i think this is a better choice you use whatever you want it's your life it's your gun you make your decision whatever you think is appropriate i just want you to make it based on facts not on marketing that's my spiel. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you like what you saw, please hit subscribe, and you'll be notified when new videos are posted.